Yo, what's a crack? In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I advise my clients to warm up their lower body before a strength training session. If you have access to a stationary bike, I wouldn't mind for people to spend the first 5 minutes cycling at a moderate pace to send blood to their lower body muscles. This optional opening could serve you as a moment to visualize the work ahead of you. This step could fit you well if you're the type of person who prefers easing into things and might need some extra time to get mentally ready. However, not everyone trains at the gym, and that's okay, so this step isn't mandatory. Completing a few repetitions of foundational movements is. Here, you see me demonstrate a couple of bodyweight exercises that are meant to cover all the basics. Starting with squats, you can never go wrong with this bilateral lower body movement. Make sure that you go as deep down as you can so that your hips open up in the process. Lunges are also great to force your lower body to perform in a more disadvantageous stance. Here, you assume a split position where one leg is in front of the other. Step-ups are another unilateral squat exercise done on an elevated surface. So, similar concept, one leg does most of the work. If you have access to free weights, you could complete a few reps of a hip hinge in the form of a Romanian deadlift. That way, you're also targeting the back of your legs, aka your hamstrings. And to finish things off, you could do a few reps of glute bridges on the floor or hip thrust with your upper back on an elevated surface. Either variation allows you to include a movement that focuses primarily on a unilateral hip extension, which is pretty good to have as part of your warm-up. A simple circuit, consisting of a few exercises like the ones I just mentioned, is a great lower body warm-up. 6 to 12 reps in each would do wonders to prime your muscles for high intensities later on. Alright, this approach would suffice for the vast majority of people, but please keep in mind that there are always outliers out there who require special attention in specific areas. A common issue I see sometimes is the lack of dorsiflexion at the ankle joint that might prevent your knees from traveling forward during squat. If that's you, please make sure to spend some time opening up your ankle joint by placing some free weights on your lower thigh while forcing a great degree of knee flexion. Another drill worth your while could be related to hip abduction and adduction. I'm referring to the act of bringing your leg to the side or towards your center with a resistance band attached to it. Some folks could benefit from a more comprehensive warm-up around the hips. Once you've covered the general basics, now it's time to focus on the movement-specific part of the warm-up, which is the phase where you ramp up the intensity in an exercise in preparation for the working set. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you have to perform a high bar back squat with 40 kg for 10 reps. So that's your goal. That's what is called your working set. A sensible ramp-up set leading to that performance would be to complete 6 to 8 repetitions of the same exercise but with half the load, in this case 20 kg. Another example could be a Romanian deadlift. If my working set prescribes, let's say, 10 reps with 60 kg, a reasonable ramp up could be to complete a first set of 10 reps with just a barbell, which weighs 20 kg. This would be followed by another set where you would complete 5 to 8 reps with 40 kg. Ramp up sets are simply a tool that serves the purpose of closing a wide gap in intensity between the general warm up of phase 1 and the actual working set written on your training program. At a beginner level, you have the luxury of not having to spend too much time on ramp up sets, but this ought to change over time as you become stronger. It's just the nature of the beast. Alright, so to sum it all up, a proper lower body warm up for strength training is the one that moves from general to specific. First, you'd perform the main functions of the joints that are going to be involved during the workout – ankle, knees, and hips. And you do that with very light intensities, usually with your own body weight. Then you move on to overload the prescribed movements gradually. This second phase is exercise-specific based on the training plan, and here you're meant to accumulate reps that will eventually resemble what comes after in terms of intensity. I really hope you found a ton of value in today's episode. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and click on the notification bell so that you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.